Now, this is really something that I want to talk about, uh, biomass. We love it, we need it, and we want it, but so do a lot of other people. And as energy prices increase, which they guaranteed will, um, there's going to be a lot of competition for biomass. And biomass to energy can be a good thing, or it can be a very problematic thing, depending on if the biomass is treated and, and used sustainably, and if it is the appropriate biomass to use, if we are not cutting down native forests to create monoculture plantations to create biomass, then that is a good thing. But let's take a look at biomass, because this is extremely important. This is what we're depending on. So according to us humans, biomass is any carbon-based material which, when sufficiently dry, can be thermally converted to energy and other byproducts. It sounds great to an engineer, but what does nature call biomass? Biomass is a complex structure of nutrients, moisture, and temperature regulators providing shelter, food, homes, and carbon sequestration. Those two definitions are very, very different, and we are going to have to reconcile and, and honor those two definitions, particularly honoring the na nature's definitions if we want to be successful in using biomass sustainably. Biomass is really cool, and it's really cool in place. And one of the, the, the ecological functions in the soil, it's organic matter, it replenishes organic matter, it builds the soil, it protects the soil from wind and, and water erosion, and it has a strong role in the carbon cycle. Um, biomass in water, biomass is really integral to the, the hydrologic cycle because it moderates evaporation. If you have a bare piece of ground, you know it dries out and just turns to, to cracked mud if you don't have some kind of protection or cover. Likewise, when it rains, if, it's, if the soil is not covered, you get a lot of runoff, a lot of sedimentation. Um, biomass will also hold the snow and, and <clears throat> will slow spring runoff, and you will, um, it also helps to moderate stream temperatures on, when it's on the stream banks. It's, um, it's very important as, as a source of food, shelter, and, and protection for animals, and that's anything from you know, huge animals to little tiny microbes, um, thermal cover, nesting platforms, hiding cover. Um, Biomass and site ecology, it actually moderates the effects of wind. I mean, in, and wind can dry out soil, so it's not like wind is only in the treetops, it's along the, the, uh, the surface of the earth as well. And that, that biomass can break up that, that, um, that wind and, and prevent the, the uh, wind-driven erosion. And <clears throat> it also helps to hold snow, like a snow fence. You know, and, and, um, and that's really important for recharging soil water. And then um, it obviously influences moisture patterns and, and the retention and distribution of that moisture. And again, it supports the mycelial functions above and below ground. So it's doing all that, and yet we want to use it for something else. So, you know, and, and the, the biochar community is really very, very concerned about the sustainability and the quality of the biomass that we're using. And we want to make sure that what we're doing, first and foremost, is intercepting the waste stream and not even using 100% of the waste because there's a very important function, as we just saw, of that biomass staying in place. So there's a certain amount of tons per acre, and, in, and I, I think in a, a dug fir habitat type, you might have uh, five tons per acre um, should be left on the ground. So leaving some on the ground, what else, what can we take off that's excess, that's concentrated, that is, is more more than the, the soil and the site needs. Um, pulpwood, if there's insect-killed trees, um, particularly dense concentrations of them. Forest slash and thinned materials that would otherwise just be piled and burned. Um, it, or if it's urban forest waste, that that would be taken to a landfill. Um, there are other uses for it, you know, the eco-composting and, and all that. But all of it doesn't get used. and Biochar can be really, really good solution if you have, uh, for instance, Dutch elm disease or some, some uh, tree disease where you do not want to allow that the residues from those trees to get back into the soil and re-contaminate um, the soil with that, that virus or, or um, disease. And so um, we know of, of instances where, where um, 
trees that have been infected with a, a, can, um, a contagion can be turned to biomass very safe or biochar very safely and the uh, and then not pollute but still be able to or not contaminate other soils and trees but still be able to be used um, and in in a rather gross example but but worth worth noting is that in Canada they are using pyrolysis units for um, treating roadkill uh, because of chronic wasting disease that that actually the the high temperatures of, of pyrolysis will actually kill the prions that are in the brain that spread the the, uh, the chronic wasting disease so you know not not uh, lovely to think about but a a, a positive use of, uh, of pyrolysis obviously wood waste from processing and I'll tell you about it, a very exciting conference that's coming up tricon um, Lumber is uh, in, in St. Regis is actually going to be one of our first biochar pioneers in uh, in Montana, and they're looking at the feedstocks of the not only the forest slash and waste that's close to them their 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 site, but also to use the wood waste that they from processing now in a much more efficient manner than they're currently using it in their just their their straight up hog fuel burners, um, manure. Sufficiently dry manure is great. And, and actually, we always are very careful to say that, that biochar is a soil amendment. It's not a fertilizer. Well, it can become a fertilizer over time as it draws nutrients and holds them. But when you put it in the soil, for most feedstocks that, that you, um, that from which you derive the biochar, you are only talking about a soil amendment. Now, where you get into the uh, biochar as a fertilizer is if you pyrolysize chicken litter, the bedding from, from poultry, because that is really rich with nitrogen and phosphorus, which is retained even through the pyrolysis process. So there, you actually have a fertilizer because you've already charged your biochar. That's given a lot of producers some exciting ideas because it's now, well, wait a minute. If we somehow charge this biochar with nitrogen or phosphorus or, or any other kind of nutrient, we can make it more potent more quickly. So people are trying uh, different mixes in there, putting um, fung uh, fungal spores into the char before it goes into the soil. Other people are using a more primitive but effective method, and that's putting the char in a bucket and peeing in it. And it uh, charges the, the, uh, the biochar quite nicely. Um, Agricultural crop waste, that's a biggie, because there is a lot of agricultural crop waste, and not all of it is suitable for putting back into the soil. And sometimes you're just too, you're pounding and compacting the soil too much if you go over and over trying to, trying to get all that material back in. So that's, that's an important one. Uh, straw from bluegrass operations, and in the Pacific Northwest, they grow a lot of bluegrass, and they have a lot of straw left over from that. Um, and growing it for seed primarily. And any spoiled hay or straw that, that is molded or can't be fed to uh, wildlife or um, livestock can be used. Bagace, the residue from sugar production. Um, and you could argue that it's a better use of uh, um, corn stover and bagace. Perhaps it's a much better use to char it rather than try to uh, use it for ethanol. And uh, methane digester residue. It's gooey stuff, but if you mix it with other feedstock, you can you actually can create biochar. And there is another project um, just in the Flathead Valley that is uh, growing algae as a form of, of green power, and then they are uh, charring, they are converting the, the algae and and um, wood waste to biochar. But again, intercepting the waste stream is key. Now. Are there concerns? You bet there's concerns, and some very legitimate concerns. One is, of course, the use of food or animal feed as a feedstock. Ethanol. What did we discover about ethanol? Besides having a lousy uh, energy return on energy invested and, and, not, and having a very poor life cycle assessment result, that, that actually we were taking food out of people's mouths, that we were causing prices to soar in Mexico for corn. Um, and so actually, the, um, and, and, oops, sorry. 
Uh, in Maryland, where I was helping them with their, um, develop their climate change action plan, those studies came out just as we were evolving towards the final plan, and, and we had a lot in there about biomass to energy, and they got very excited, and immediately we altered the plan when we saw those studies so that um, they said that it, you could not use any biomass that was a feed or, or a food or animal feed as a feedstock. Another one is the concern about uh, converting cropland to grow biomass. Are we taking valuable land that could produce food uh, to, to grow some fast-growing species like poplar or something and then whacking it for biomass. Conversion of the conservation reserve program lands. You, went, you know, I thought, what an idiotic idea. Who would do that? Well, I'll tell you what, I ran across a lot of people who want to do that. And, you know, it's like, well, they're just sitting there. It's like, oh, good Lord, you know. <laughs> They're sitting there for a very important purpose. They're providing habitat, they're resting the soils, they're, they're, they're providing an important natural service by, by sitting there. So going in there with a, a large lawnmower type piece of equipment and shaving off most of the biomass is not a conservation reserve program goal. Industrial scale production, or collection of biomass. That's another one that, that we really have to be very concerned about because people start to, to do the math, they see the economics, and they go, wait a minute, I could make a buck. So, you know, we're going to make a large centralized um, uh, um, process here and suck in all this biomass. And this has been done a lot in developing countries, so it's not, um, you know, it's not a, a false concern, and it definitely needs to, to not happen. Um, the transportation carbon footprint and cost, that's another very legitimate concern. But we have had a couple of studies done now, life cycle assessment of, of, uh, of biomass to biochar, and it's still, um, profitable, it still has a, a negative carbon footprint out to 200 miles. Now we don't recommend that, you know, we say the closer the better, mobile units, smaller units, distributed units, so you're not dragging that biomass all over the place and creating, a, you know, offsetting your benefits of putting the carbon in the, in the soil by dragging your biomass, or bio, you know, your, your biomass around. And, you know, case in point, I had a, a, a guy who was working on a, a large grant that was going to require a couple of pyrolysis units. There are, then the, the technology is fairly nascent in the United States. States, but this fellow uh, was working with a, a, um, a company in Australia, and Australians are way ahead of us in biochar. They've been at it for years, but um, the, and they have great equipment. So he's trying to sell me a piece of a pyrolysis unit from Australia, and I said, "Are you nuts?" I said the the carbon footprint of dragging that unit from the other side of the world over to here will be completely negated by all the biochar it could ever produce and put back in the soil. So let's not get ahead of ourselves here. And so I'm waiting until they actually start to produce those units in the United States before I um, engage in a business manner with him. Um, ecologically unsustainable biomass um, removed from, from crops and for or croplands and forests. You know, I've already addressed that. The, that biomass is serving an important function and some of it needs to be left there in place. And very importantly, effects on visual quality and wildlife habitat. If you want to get shut down in a biomass removal project, make it look ugly. Ruin the wildlife habitat and the public will not let you continue. And you know, we talk about the wildland urban interface. Oh, I'll save that for when I get